Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. The Hobbit, The Battle of Five Armies, movie thoughts. Now. Usually I just use the notes that I have on the whiteboard and I tend to take notes and then apply those to the whiteboard before I start recording, but this particular time there's a lot of notes here so I'm just gonna see if I can somewhat smoothly, yeah. The, the Bard's kids, not a, lot of, not, not a lot came of those, really, which I suppose I mean, they're too young to have offspring. Not what I was trying to say. They really were only there so, so that he could rescue them and, you know, you had the, the boy being a little more heroic, you know, and kind of you know, taking after his father. Ultimately, it's, it's kind of there to make Bard you know, a, a single, you know, su supporter of a family, and, yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I guess it's fine, it just feels like there should maybe have been a little bit more there, since they, yeah, but ultimately it's just, uh-oh, if something goes wrong during the, you know, you know, yeah, when, when they, when they attack, what is it, Dale, I guess? You know, when the orcs attack Dale, it's like, uh oh, Bard's family's there. You know, where if if maybe he didn't have a family, you know, supposedly we maybe wouldn't care quite as much. This does really well at, at putting people we care about in harm's way, or people that people we care about care about people. I, yeah, something like that. I, I will say, Bard's son. Bane, you know, the, the, yeah, I do a terrible Bane impression, so, so don't, don't worry. I think Bard was trying to outdo William Tell with, with that opening, so that was, yeah, it was, that was fun, especially had, had him having to adjust, you know, little, little to the left, boy, there we go. When, when Keeley said, I'm going to go with Keeley, I think it's Keeley, Keeley, the, the, Tauriel and Keeley, you know, the, yeah. When Keeley said to Tauriel, you make me feel alive, part of me really wants to, to just shake him and tell him, that's because she saved your life. Doesn't necessarily mean there's a connection there, but yeah. I don't know. I, I guess maybe that's what the that's that's the joke, and and we of course have the love triangle also involve a jewel, the the symbol of yeah, because it worked the first time. Now. When a Zog showed up and literally had you know a a sword for an arm now, you know, where, where last time he had that, you know, yeah, like a, like a fork kind of thing. He is officially a Bond villain now, or, you know, that, that guy from Enter the Dragon, the, the villain from Enter the Dragon. Now... It's pure fan service to bring in the, 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 the nine Nazgul and then have them beat up, but it was really cool. I'm I'm really glad we saw we get we get to see Elrond kick ass, and yeah, and and really you know Elrond, Galadriel, Saruman, in different ways too, and and Gandalf didn't do so much in this, but he did do you know a nice amount in Desolation, so. 
yeah. And glad to see that Radagast got to do something again, although, again, it really was, you know, he was just so much more fun in, in the first one. I, I suppose it's difficult to, excuse me, to recapture that, but, excuse me. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get to more Radagast, but I will. I quite like Thranduil. He gets a little more characterization in Desolation than, well, yeah, in, in Journey he gets none. He's, he's there and he didn't help. So that's uh, Desolation, he gets some. This really fleshes him out, I feel, with we find out, you know, I gotta say, I love, I mean, I swear it's not just because it's Lee Pace, whom I love. I swear the character himself really just the 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 pride and the just when when Thorin is insulting him and he is like, you know, just fuming with indignant fury. That is that that's awesome. That's and and it's kind of like Part of you can't help but cheer for for Thorin because, I mean, it was it was really a sucky situation that he was left in in the first one in in the the you know opening exposition dump, and Thranduil could have done something. So, yeah, it was it was kind of fun. I really feel like in this one we got we fully get to understand why does he not, you know. Yeah, why why doesn't he try to you know, he's 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 a bit isolate isolationist. I want him to be a little bit more interventionist, maybe. This you know. And yeah, I mean my wife died. And you know what 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 did Layla say? She she they didn't even get to bury her, some something like that. There's a lot of information in this one. But but yeah, it just yeah, he he no longer was, and and you know he looks around at all these dead elves, and it's, enough elven blood has been spilt. You know, it's yeah. Now, I liked the the dragon sickness with. You know, they they give Thorin some of that same audio filter thing that they did with with Smaug, and the you know, yeah, it it just it it was a nice way to and and the the full on, you know, I don't know, hallucination. You know, when when he wakes up, you know, and he. You know, he sees the gold. I really like that. That I really did not think anything other than just some uh, cool and yeah, unsatisfying. But uh, ultimately, unsatisfying climax was going to come out of that in desolation. But I will say, I mean, I think I think that that solid gold of s solid gold of floor that walks upon Thorin. I feel like that's the the melted gold that made a full dwarf statue, which was surprisingly big for a dwarf. That's racist. I feel like that's once it once it melted and and on the floor. I feel like that's what he's walking on, and it's kind of like I mean, even when you see that 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 statue, it's like opulence. This is this is you know, and talk about one percenters. <laughs> And and now that it's melted and and he's walking across and it's it's a great visual because what you know what what more I guess opulent is a good you know what goes beyond literally walking on the gold you know it's it's like yeah I mean you know and and I feel it's 
it's a good thing they didn't do that in in the the caverns of of gold because someone who's really who really you know wants gold wants to keep gold and and this big you know huge pile of of gold I feel like that's gonna that's gonna conjure up Scrooge McDuck imagery, so I think it's good that they went with the the, the all gold floor, and then he sees Smaug underneath, and you know the yeah and all the the you know what he said, what Bilbo said, what Dwalin said, was it Balin? One of them, you know, all of that ringing, and and he finally just realizes, and and that image of him swallowed up by the gold, kind of, you know, it's it's very King Midas kind of, you know, to to what end? What what you know? I love the line with, you know, though you stand with with a crown in this place. You have never been lower. Something like that. I'm I'm probably butchering that line. That was awesome. That was that was spot on. Now I quite liked just in general Thorin with the Arkenstone. You know, this thing of one of them is false. You know, he's he's so paranoid and too to play de to play devil's advocate, yes, fair enough. There is an Arkenstone. Yes, it was stolen. Nevertheless, he's still, you know, not not. Yeah, he's he's mistrusting his own kin, and uh, yeah, as as is also said. Now, when right as as. Thorin, you know, says this to to Bilbo, and he's like completely, you know, he like takes a step back, and you know, the the some of the dwarves are are marching past in like you know full army regalia. I like to think that that's completely by accident. It's just you know they were having conversations, steps back. Okay, let's do. And this answered the, the question I've always wondered. I think I even said it in the must have been the Immortals one. What happens when a guy, you know, walking through this giant army, you know, what if he suddenly has to make a turn or someone else comes up? This one answers it. Every time someone passes through the elves, it happened a little bit with the dwarves too, but the elves have got it down to a science. Those those guys, you know, Pilates, yoga, the whole deal, I, I'm telling you. Walking through, you know, not only the this big elk, you know, you know, thranduil on this big elk, also, you know, what was it, bard, I think, and like, you know, and he's not really quite comfortable with this. I, I like when he walks out and he sees the elves, and then he starts to walk down, and they just open, and he's just constantly like taken aback. Just, just as a prank, if if Thranduil can spare them, I think it would be funny to have a line of those, just like from from his bedroom to to the dining room table, something like that, so that every step he would, you know, have to deal with elves, you know, turning turning to the side and you know letting him pass through. Now, in this, it's said that. Erebor will serve as a base to, you know, that that's why it's useful to, you know, I'm not sure it's really connected to Sauron. Yeah, they, they talk about to the orcs, something like that. You know, as, yeah, for, for a base because of, like, where, you know, the, the position of it. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's... Yeah, they, they really want a way to get the ring back in there to to somehow tie it to the I, I really feel like the 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 bit with you know Saruman. I 
leave Sauron to me. You know, that's that's in the trailer as well. When I watched in the trailer, I was like, is that really where they're gonna where they're gonna leave it? And I watched the movie. That's really where they're gonna leave it. It is so for another sixty years. No one spoke of Sauron, and and everyone was just no no no. Sauron's dealing with it. We left Sauron to him. It's it's fine. It's cool. I don't know. I just I feel like if they hadn't tried, if if Peter Jackson hadn't tried to fit all that in, it wouldn't quite be so awkward, you know. And I don't know. I just feel like I guess the idea here is that if the orcs had managed to take Erebor, they would have the base and... question mark profit, I, I guess? I don't I, know, I, I, no, I mean, we're still 60 years, or I guess maybe at the start there, they, they slow down the necromancer from, from bringing back Sauron's eye, you know, for for a while there with with slaying the Nazgul and such. But yeah, I don't really see. It also seemed like they in in Lord of the Rings trilogy. It seemed like they had plenty, you know, army and and like I don't know. I I don't really see. I I guess if they also had. The Lonely Mountain, it might have been really useful for a further base. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite see, especially given that, okay, so all of these orcs that were going to take all of Middle-earth, they're all defeated. I'll, I'll grant, these, these are some badasses we got here, and there are some pretty impressive armies. But is that really it? Like, they, they had all that many, and then they were... I, I just feel like Middle-earth's gonna be okay if, if you know... If, if this is what it took, you know, if... if I mean, you can talk about Lord of the Rings, you know, great battles, but still... Yeah, it, they still need to deal with, with the ring. And in this one, it's just the big battle. So it it just it does end up, you know, not quite working. Now there was a little bit there where the once you know when when they've when when the dwarves are you know hold down and you've got the the elven army, you know, when when like Thorin threatens you know, shoot, shoot Thranduil, and then, you know, all the, the elves, you know, get, you know, for, for a second there, you think it's going to be, okay, the dwarves are going to have to fight in the shade. There are werewolves in this. The spice must flow, I guess. Now... When when that one giant like I don't know, I, I guess it must be a troll of of some sort, or a big daddy orc maybe, but you know got like big big stone, not quite a helmet, but like you know he he looks like a hammerhead shark or something, and he just headbutts the you know the wall. I I like to think that that's just him having a bad habit of, of headbutting things and they're like, you know what? Strap some some you know stone on on that head. I've I've got something he can do. Now I haven't really watched Harry Potter, nor will I, nor 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 will I ever conceivably be convinced to, but I swear there were times where Bard's kid looked like Ron Weasley. Now I suppose that might be 
more or less. Yeah. I did think that during the battles, the dwarves and orcs had two similar armor. They're both like kind of grayish, and there's there's a little bit of red, but I just it's it's not really fair to compare either to the elves. But to compare them to the elves, the elves are really clearly standing out. You know, these these golden kind of, you know, very elaborate, very fancy, you know, kind of. And in this, the thing is that the dwarves look the way we're used to the orcs looking, basically, is, is you know, when, yeah, when, when I see the look, I'm, I'm like, that's an orc. And in this, the, the dwarves also, I, that's, that's a little bit unfortunate. When, when Thorin comes in and, and has changed his mind, you know, <laughs> Feely gives off, off this big speech. I like to think that he's just been, you know, been rehearsing that, you know, checking, okay, Thorin's still not back. Okay, you guys, let me, just give me feedback. What do you think of this? You know, and just practicing, psyching himself up, and then he, he sends, okay, Thorin's coming. Okay, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. He's there. Okay. And he gives this big speech. That was, yeah. And, and like, d dude, dude, it's okay. Don't even have to say it. I'm, I'm already convinced. I'm, I'm on your side. But it was a good speech, though. I, I feel like for a while there, Azog got kind of... He, he was just the guy giving orders. Like, you know, okay, so there. You know, he was, he was, he was orchestrating the battle with, with the, you know... Yeah, I see. But I will say I like that they then, from that, go to Thorin wanting to take him down. He's like, he's up there, so we, you know, and then that doesn't quite go as planned. Now, let's see. And I like that the... The love triangle. At least it's resolved in this one. The the thing that bothered me the most in this one about it was that Tariel got real close to damsel in distress territory. Real close. Way too close. With with you know, suddenly it's that Feely has to go and rescue her. And that oh Peter Jackson, do not. You've given us so such cool, badass, strong females. Do you, do you really need to to and you know? And then afterwards, it's like you know, if this is love, I don't want to fight us. It hurts so much. It's, I get what you're going for. I really do. And I, I I. It's almost good. It's it's so almost really really good, but. Man, is that not? Yeah, that's just. This is way too too close to, you know, bad gender stereotyping. Now, I suppose that I liked how Lytle is in this one. Just he he liked to stab enemy creatures to control them. It was like, you know, first there's that, I think they said it was like, what was it? It was like bats, like unholy horde of flying bats, man. Yeah, stabs one of them, it's just like, okay, and, and down, you know, and then he stabs this big, you know, troll thing and gets it to what is it charge to to break the tower down into the yeah. That was yeah, he's that's that's he, he should probably look into like some kind of animal trainer thing. And and obviously anytime the, the elves like 
you know, use someone's shoulders as stepping stones or wrap their legs around. Yeah, that was that was badass every single time. Now, when Thorin and Azog are going at it, there's there's a bit there where you're like, you know, Azog just keeps using this mace, and there's there's a little bit there where he's like. He's not hitting him, and he he really looks like this is this is not working. And and it's like, dude, just 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 put it. There. You got a perfectly good arm sword right there, you know. But no, no, dude's dude's dedicated to that thing. And we have eagles. We have court eagles. And what's worse is we have fighting eagles. This, I, I think this is like to get back at everyone who's been like, well, why don't the, the eagles just fly and, and drop the ring, you know. I've never been a big fan of the, the eagles you know, flying in and, and saving, you know, but before at least they did just fly in and get someone and, and such. In this, they genuinely like you know they they're grabbing works and throwing them, and it's just like I'm sorry, but if you're doing that in this, then why aren't they doing it in Lord of the Rings where it matters so much more? But yeah, and I think isn't that also where they airdrop? You know, yeah, you've got Radagast controlling one of them, which <laughs> yeah, I guess okay. So so it's you know he can also do it, and you know if if Gandalf can talk to. The eagles obviously Radicast can. He's he's way more in touch with nature as we've seen. Excuse me, but it still didn't. And and this is where like Bayor, excuse me, is is air drawn. You know, excuse me, just yeah, dropped onto the and and he briefly gets to kick ass. I really feel like they. I figured he was going to be in this more, or at least, yeah, at least be in this. I don't really. I feel like they almost didn't really. He's just there to fight briefly. There's no like extra kind of. Yeah, what I'm getting at is, if you had cut him, we wouldn't really be missing much. It would just be, oh wait, I thought Bayarn was supposed to be in this. You know, it's, yeah. I quite liked pretty much the whole battle between, the, the final duel between Azog and Thorin. And with, you know, yeah, as, you know, he, he, Thorin makes Azog slide into the water, you know, and, and you're thinking like, oh, this, you know, he's dead. But then suddenly it, it you know, it dawns, it dawned on me. Orcs are resilient. Who says an orc can't survive in in icy water? So so yeah, he he could. And like, yeah, you know, stabs. I I quite like the. Let's see if I'm remembering it correctly. I th yeah, I think Thorin. Well, yeah, he he's trying to stab Thorin, and he's got the you know, it's it's like the the size. It's it's like you know, it's it's straight out of Raphael and the turtles. Makes sense for Raphael because he's got this tiny little you know, and and so he's he's blocking. Dude's got a sword. Why does his sword need need little you know? Live long and prosper blade thingy uh, there at the end of it. I mean, it it really just allows. I, I don't know. I guess it's to to be able to squeeze it in closer and like oh, you're you're that you that you that oh, there you go you're dead. But really, in this case, at least it just you know kind of slows him down and then you know gives Thorin enough time to you know he he takes the full and then strikes you know. And then he like somebody straddled someone else. I I don't remember if it was that, but but yeah, that was quite yeah. 
Now, I feel like Bard really disappears. Basically, the last we see of him is when he tells off Alfred, and and he's there with his kids. That's about it, you know. After that, I mean, there's there's this brief little like, yeah, he he, you know, we see a shot. He's just barely in the shot of like, okay, so yeah, he's gonna he's gonna help them. Obviously, he's he's a leader. That really wasn't properly like dealt with I mean he we see him start to take some but yeah I just feel like for a bit of this to an extent part of this was his story and yeah. a bit of the way into the battle that gets completely forgotten and, and then the battle ends and nothing more really happens it's yeah now and we have the, you know, another tie-in with, you know, the, the Thranduil says to, you know, Legolas is like, I can't, I can't go back, you know. And, yeah, Thranduil is like, well, you can, you know, go, go, or to go north, go, go somewhere. And, you know, look, look there, there's a man son of, you know, Arathorn, son of Arathorn. He calls himself Strider. His real name is for you to discover. Legolas? No, that's not, that's my name. His name must be, yeah, I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> and then when, when, when Gandalf is trying to cheer Bilbo, you know, trying to, yeah, trying to get in contact with, with Bilbo, and he just keeps, you know, yeah, he, he keeps cleaning his pipe, which is not okay to do in a PG-13 movie, I might add, but it really just goes to show pot humor solves everything. And I think that was actually the last of what I had noted in the theater. Now, before I went, I had, you know, having, having read the last bit of the book, I was wondering if it was actually going to go through with killing off Feely Keely and Thorin, and indeed having Thorin reconcile with Bilbo on his deathbed. I'm really glad that they did. I thought that worked really well. I mean, it's uh, obviously special Thor, especially Thorn with Bilbo. And uh, yeah, I've I've pretty much all I've I've said almost everything I want to say about their relationship. Briefly, I I like the thing with, you know, it it ends and and like it's just for all of how we've we've snickered and gone oh well on Martin Freeman's Bilbo's little you know little facial tics and you know I, you know kind of yeah the the little Bilbo stuff where you know very very bag end bag in sorry of of just you know you know gentlemen of of journey he wants tea time that's that's you know he wants to go home for tea time as much as it's been fun here it really works as dramatic it's like you know no 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 you're no 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 and it's just and he looks it's just devastating really well done now i almost feel bad for Keely basically just being, you know, ditched. He's basically, he's killed in or he's, he is kind of just like, yeah, he's, he's killed to drive on his brother and Thorin. And yeah, that's, that does kind of suck for his character. But I will say the, you know, yeah, when, when, 
I think Feely when yeah, Feely with with Toriel when when Feely then goes to try to avenge that, and with this thing of you know, I, mean, I already mentioned that I'm really not crazy about Toriel almost ending up a damsel in distress. I do think that there was some good. I I like that it didn't end up just being Philly comes in and rescues her and that then he gets killed and Tariel, you know, it's it's the Arwen thing all over again, of course, but they do at least, you know, it's not they do they don't do exactly the same when they could have, you know. And yeah, I mean it's it it works, you know. Evangeline Lilly really does get to you and does, yeah, you know. Now, I think that might be about yes. So yeah, in closing, yes, yes. I wanted to say. I really like how they ended the ending with with tying it together. I mean, I do agree that this thing, you know, when when we see in the very first one that it's tying the Hobbit into the Lord of the Rings chronology or the Bilbo telling writing down the Hobbit in the chronology of. Lord of the Rings with, with it taking place early in Fellowship. I don't think that that was absolutely necessary, but I do think it works really nicely here with, you know, we see him look at the ring and then, you know, he's he's much older and there's a knock at the door and the lines are exactly like in Fellowship and it just, I don't know, maybe, maybe I am sappy, but that, that just, that worked. I, I think, and it just, yeah, on on the whole, that I feel like, yeah, they, they did some really great stuff with Bilbo in this one. It was, yeah, and, and it kind of, you know, ultimately it is, his story. It is it is his perspective to to an extent that we see the story through. And yeah, it just it th in this one we really felt that. We really felt that it was about him and that really worked. It's you know the the writing and Martin Freeman's acting and his scenes with Thorin you know, R Richard Armitage, also great acting. Yeah. I don't remember if I said in this, I think I only said in the review, Billy Connolly is Dane. Absolutely awesome. Love, you know. Yeah. Did not say this in the review. And, I'm, yeah. Only wanted to say this here where, you know, so as to not spoil it. I love the... Like the first thing he says, like you know, rides in on this big like hog, and like, would you all mind just sodding off? That, yeah, that was that was really really funny. And you know, Gandalf's line, you know, they're 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 cousins, and Thorin is the level-headed one. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.